so now let us try to figure out what are the next things so we we refined the physical connectivity things and we have seen some of the commands like show interface status and show ip interface brief commands very useful commands for testing the connectivity now we'll see the switch configuration sometimes misconfigurations on your switch can also affect your packet stops let us see what are those things like i got a simple scenario here if you if you try to read this scenario there is a user sitting here it's trying to access some server on a different switch it's on the same lan when he's trying to do that the user pc1 has been transferring a very large files from here to here and the maximum throughput is 200 mbps because this port is 100 mbps 100 mbps and 1 gig so easily he can send 100 mbps of data within the lan so now what we want is we want to make sure that so transfer of 1 gb of information at the rate of 100 mbps will not take more than 80 seconds so but here the problem here is congestion on the network underperforming the hardware of the client and network or server so these are some of the potential explanations generally we say there is some congestion on the network there is devices are not performing as per their speed the client server all these things so the average load on the links in the path has not been higher than 50 percent over the last few years so ruling out the congestion as a cause so now this is the scenario so when you, whenever you come across this type of scenario where you can send 100 mbps speed and you are transferring 1 gb of data it will not take 80 seconds more than that but it's taking very huge amount of time so typically the problem will be with a duplex mismatch if you have a mismatch of duplex then you, this is the most likely reason for this type of issues so mismatch of the speed and the duplex configurations will definitely affect your communication so they will communicate but again it will affect the throughput of your communication process okay so by default the by default speed is auto in general when you when you verify the configurations on any device the speed will be auto and that's what auto negotiation we call as duplex is also auto auto means like in general we have uh, three two types of communications let's say so let's take an example here uh, there generally there are three types of communication so if there is a mismatch of duplex like take an example this device is configured with half duplex and if the opposite device is configured with full duplex then it might affect your communication between these devices so let me first explain you the three types of communications here simplex is simply a one-way communication where we only send but we don't receive anything so simplex devices examples like t television radio these are some of the simplex devices we don't do any com much communication of simplex here so we have two types of communication much in common we call them as half duplex and full duplex so half duplex means we are having two-way communication but not at the same time which means just like walkie talkie you can send but you cannot receive at the same time but once it finishes you can send full duplex means sending and receiving simultaneously now most of the devices new devices like our new switches and pcs all the devices network devices support full duplex which supports high speed data transfer rates but if you take some uh, some of the hubs and some of the older switch models supports half duplex so if you were mismatch of this duplex settings so by default settings will be in each and every device we have something called auto auto so the meaning of auto is auto negotiation where if this device supports full duplex if other device also full duplex then automatically they work on full duplex so let's say if one of the device is supporting uh, half duplex let's say the switch supports half duplex and maybe the device supports full duplex but if you keep it auto 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 means automatically the both the devices will work on half duplex but misconfiguration of this so there are multiple options we can use either we can use auto option or we can use half duplex or we can use full duplex depending upon the option let me show you that i have a switch here in my switch i'm going to show you the configurations i'm going to switch one and when you use question marks you'll find multiple options here the first option is you can define the speed so by default if i if i check my running configurations if i give show running configurations you can see there's nothing configured so whenever you see nothing is configured the simple reason is 
uh, it is just using the auto auto process so I'm going to my interface mode I'm going to define the speed so typically this is a fast Ethernet port so by default it supports 100 Mbps but we can define is auto auto means auto negotiation so in case of auto negotiation what it will do is if one device this device is supporting 10 Mbps and this is supporting 100 Mbps they automatically work on 10 okay but if you configure one side one side of the device has 10 and the other side of the device has 100 manual speeds in that case it will affect because this device is going to send the information at a speed of 100 mbps but this device is only capable of receiving 10 mbps means automatically it is going to drop the other packets so that is what we call as late collisions so speed mismatch or duplex mismatch will affect these things so you have to make sure that on both the sides when you are communicating you should have you should not have a mismatch of these parameters so i'm going to use speed auto here or you can just change the speed also like i'm going to change it to 10 and there is something called duplex command and using duplex command either you can leave it to auto auto is something which is default and it always recommended to leave it to auto but even if you want we can we can change it to half duplex or full duplex so mismatch of this duplex will definitely affect your communication so typically you'll find this type of messages like i got some sample output here when you verify this when you use a command called show interface f0 by 1 include duplex you'll see something called fcf errors frame check sequence errors so this this number of this number will automatically increase as more and more packets will drop this this might be the reason for your duplex mismatches and also you'll see something called late collisions happens so you'll see this number automatically increases as uh, because of this thing so make sure that whichever the port is dropping so find out that port and verify that there is no duplex mismatch so you you really don't get into this type of thing but when you're connecting some devices which supports full duplex half duplex always make sure that use auto mode auto is the recommended mode in general so it, it really not recommended to change any speeds or duplex settings but if mismatch of these settings happens then you'll see this type of issues might occur so this is what relating to switch configurations okay so physical connectivity we did and physic this one and finally before we finish i'll just give you one of the good feature of the new recent ios of cisco devices from iOS 12.2 there is something called auto medium dependent interface crossover like as per our normal studies if you remember we learned we learned that we need to have a cross cable generally if you want to connect a router to a switch we use a straight cable switch to PC we use a straight cable in all these cases and similar way if you are connecting a switch to switch similar devices or switch to or PC to PC or PC to router we use a cross cable now depending upon the uh, receiving signals and transmitting signals it is mandatory for you to use the straight cables here in this case and cross cable in this case so these are all basic things which we learn already now there is a feature called auto MD IX which we call as auto medium dependent crossover now when you enable this feature this feature will automatically detect the required cable connection whether it is straight or cross so which means if you're connecting a router to a switch so it's not really mandatory to use straight cable you can just use any type of cable and it will automatically detect but this feature is by default not enabled but one more thing you need to enable this feature and this feature is supported from iOS 12.2 so this feature to work this feature so if one of the two sides connection supports auto MDX you can use crossover or you can use straight through ethernet cable both the cables are going to work but one thing we need to keep in mind this feature is going to work only if your speed and duplex settings are set to auto negotiation which is default so make sure that you enable the speed and duplex settings to auto negotiation before you do this so this feature has to be manually enabled using a command called mdix so i have a commands here you can see the first thing I'm using on F0 by 1 or you can use a range command. I'm going to shut down it Enabling the speed and duplex settings to auto mode Okay, and then I'm going to enable MDX auto 
and finally no shutdown command so make the interface up so this is one of the most common feature which most of the most of the people generally use in the production networks where they can use either of the cables for connections so finally before we finish let me let us quickly summarize what we discussed here now there are two types of end user connectivity whenever you realize that the user in the lan is not able to communicate with another server or another computer in the lan so we are not uh, discussing any vlan configurations trunking will be discussing in detail about those troubleshootings in our next videos so here i am just focusing only on these two things where there might be a physical connectivity issue or it can be some misconfigurations on the switches which might affect like duplex mismatch or speed mismatch these are the some of the things which will affect the communication so next in the next video we'll see how to troubleshoot your vlan configurations so thanks for watching